Vice Chairman of L.V. Prasad I Institute. He is a professor of ophthalmology at the Sun Hudson University of Medical Science in Na China. So, can we, Dr. Das, uh, sir, to take up this session? Sir, please proceed. Thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity. I am sorry that uh, Dr. Mohan signed up because I enjoyed his talk. And uh, wonderful to see again uh, Dr. Pillai, Dr. Rajan, whom I have uh, known for years. Uh, and uh, when I saw the picture of Mr. Rajan, I see he looks like uh, reminds for Avinna Tagore. Hopefully, he started writing poems like Tagore and get us Nobel Prize too. All right. But Kalam's vision was always to like uh, all he told that Gandhi told how does it help a poor man how does it help a person in a village how do we have a last mile connectivity and this connectivity not only in um, education in supply chain in technique technology etc but also in healthcare we have been fortunate that I worked uh, only in two organizations in my life in my 40th year in ophthalmology and 10 years in uh, Arvinda Hospital Madurai and the group and then 30 years including this year in Abhi Prasad. Both of the organizations are the same philosophy what uh, Dr. Kalam was always talking that how to reach the poor, make it affordable, make it available and make it accessible because uh, just available not enough is somebody to access it. How to reach the last mile, reach the unreached, underprivileged, tribal and, and um, who, who can't afford otherwise. Because like Dr. Mohan just now told about the telemedicine, similarly, what will happen in future because of this uh, COVID-19 will suddenly go away, go away, three months, six months will go away, but then three will throw certain challenges. I'll confine to ophthalmology only. In ophthalmology, one unique thing has happened for the last uh, maybe 50 years is that mass screening and mass surgery. Uh, many years ago, we published an important paper from Elie Prasad that mass surgery in one place an improvised uh, school building or a child tree converted to a, to a, a temporary, uh, temporary surgical suite is not good because infection rate is high. That is why the, the, change, the whole system changed, the government of India changed to bring it to, to operate in a hospital but you can screen somewhere else. Because of social distancing, a norm will continue. Hospital will more and more will happen less crowded. So most probably government like uh, they legalize teleconsultation, they will delegalize the mass cleaning, which means that people have to be go nearer to people, either through their primary care system or through PSC, CSC or variant of that. We and we have created a system called IE Health Pyramid, which is a five tier system. The bottom one is uh, for a community. For today, Government of India talks about the uh, health and wellness clinic, followed by primary, secondary, tertiary, and a super tertiary or a center of excellence kind of thing. Then a population country, populous country like India, requires the five structures. This model has been copied by various countries in Africa, Latin America, including including Australia. Recently, October 2019, on the eve of World Side Day. We worked for two years for a document called World Report on Vision because uh, of the because Vision 2020 is ending in 2020 and how to do it till 2030 or 2040 and bring down the value of the sustainable development goal. They come out with a new term which is called the uh, integrated people centric eye care, where he says that people should be the eye care should be available, accessible, affordable without a huge financial crisis. Because of this COVID-19 and what will happen in future, I envisage that you have to go nearer to people, not through a mass training, but with a fixed facilities. I'm happy that uh, we at Prasad got 184 vision centers serving a population of 50,000 people. Similarly, to my own last estimate, Arvind has got some 70 plus, uh, then uh, Chitrakot in, uh, in uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, then Sarap Charity in uh, Uttar Uttar Pradesh, or in Delhi, NCR, a similar number of vision centers. The government of India has also got many, many, many CSCs and PSCs in all those 700 plus districts. All this can be converted to a vision center and where 
service can be delivered. The good part of eye care is that 75% is avoidable or requires a minimal intervention with the highest uh, return for investment. Example, example is uh, 46% of the eye care is on a pair of glasses. You want to do, if you if you my own glasses, I become kind of a blind for near vision. And 29% is because of cataract. 75% care can be given to a person within 25, 30 kilometer radius of, of instead of traveling for long distance. I'm also in fortunate, I'm in doctor, and I'm actually work as a chairman for the Universal Eye Health Program in Government of Orissa. I partly employed the government. I don't take salary from them, but I get other, other benefits like my car, my secretary at my secretary office, etc. etc. Where in last year we we converted uh, 53 uh, CSCs, uh, community health centers, into the into the vision centers. And similarly, for unreachable district where the population is less, particularly those tribal districts, we put uh, also 10 mobile vehicles which, where you can go and reach one day per week. That means 50 per times you can go in those, in those 10 vehicles. And this year, supposed to put another 50, but then uh, because of this COVID thing, I delayed. Most probably it will be done again, but uh, we delayed though. What the new normal will happen is that those people who have got a fixed facility close to the people, close to people where they live will have a much better benefit than, than otherwise. And we're happy that uh, uh, both uh, my dear organizations close to my heart, Arvind and uh, Adi Prasad are already doing that. And we are the leaders in this field. One lesson which ophthalmology taught to healthcare in India is how did we improve our cataract surgical rate? Now, incidentally, cataract surgical rate called CSR, not corporate social responsibility, is a surrogate measure of how eye care is doing in the world or, or the country. In 1990s, early 1990s, our cataract surgical rate was very, very low, less than 2000 it was. And at that time, we got a wonderful uh, World Bank loan to improve our things. So while we could have done only eye camps, like uh, many countries would have imagined, our, our planners did a wonderful thing called training the trainers and trainees. And that helped to remove, improve the capacity building for the country to improve the, improve the delivery system. Along with that, which uh, many speakers, uh, Dr. Rajan, Dr. Pillai have all alluded to, two things happened. One is that Indian device industry in ophthalmology, let's say intraocular lenses or slit lamps or like this, and the Indian pharma industry making those pharmaceutical uh, eye drops and stuff join hands. So combined combination of the Indian pharma, Indian uh, device and ophthalmology and Indian ophthalmology trained people join hands together. Today, we have got every 6,000 plus uh, surgical, cattle surgical rate per million population and, and state like Gujarat at 9,000 plus actually. We have what uh, any other country in the South Asia do. Incidentally, I also the regional chair for the South Asia International Prevention International Agency Prevention of Blindness. So I have the opportunity to look at those uh, ten countries around us. Uh, let's compare uh, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Maldives, etc. We are way ahead. In Maldives, forty-eight percent of the people today, uh, actually, survey uh, published last year. 48% of the people go outside the country for cataract surgery. And many of them come to Madurai, come to Trivandrum, some of them go to Sri Lanka or Bangkok. One argument which government gives, so the people give there, you know, they go for little fun also because certain funds you cannot have in Maldives, but that is not really true for everybody. They go for the reason that they do not have the capacity to serve people. There are only eight ophthalmologists in, in Maldives and four of them are from outside the country. Same thing applies to Bhutan, in Bangladesh, in Timor Leste, in Indonesia, except for Thailand, most probably most countries are way behind our IT system. But what is what is preventing us to become the world leader is one thing we spoken again and again is that we do not trust ourselves. I was about to say why Indian industry are not flourishing as, as uh, industry outside. Actually, my answer already given by Dr. Rajan that yes, I know my friends who are entrepreneurs and in the industry, they're not able to go because the government of India will put a ban if it is not so-called imported from outside. In 1980s, uh, uh, when Arvin started intraoculant manufacturing on a large scale to meet the both internal need, uh, known electron, they went to external need. 
one question my question you know i used to work there so my question to ask will be is it imported and i also joke yeah it's imported uganda so they say uganda again and get said oh you don't know uganda this is a part of united states of america oh when they say america they are happy somehow you do not believe that you not it is not in if india is not good i agree that indian marketing is not good indian packaging is not good a same product made in china is much package much better than what india does packages and i know many many industries uh, who are making wonderful things and we are buying them at least an intra lenses or dependence on the on the import lenses is tremendous to reduce i'm sure in future things will happen and same thing in pharma industry also we have the opportunity to run the entire ihl system for of uh, western africa small little country called liberia when we went to liberia we found that drugs were almost 10 times more expensive than than the than market in india and it is not possible to do the cost because there are a lot of uh, bureaucratic uh, stumbling blocks like happens in india too so i am sure that things will will open up uh, this is an opportunity winston churchill many years ago told that a good man will not let go a good crisis so this is a good crisis a good crisis will teach us many things how to do it i was not very fond of example the zoom technology of uh, i say in person meeting is always better than meeting in distance but then putting it in putting right now i'm doing in fact i have got one more after this uh, so after this meeting i'll do one more international meeting so things will change but things will change only when we put our heart like that kalam always told that how do we go to the last mile to the tribes to the undis people my heart breaks actually when i see this migrants walking on the street and the on the road i'm i'm little sorry that i am not able to do anything for for them so this will happen but the future what is holding is what will require is to do a huge increase into the huge training capacity fishing is good and i but giving fish is not good so if you train more number of people and not be very selfish that they must work with us then you can do well we train a lot of school graduates uh, soon after their schooling for a two year program for allied ophthalmic sciences uh, in nurse, in ophthalmic nursing in uh, in uh, vision technician where they do a job which is repetitive doesn't require a huge uh, huge intelligence uh, but repetitive unfortunately government of india stops it and unfortunately the bsc optometry science uh, people of the example of the council of india of the federation of india they put a stop that no my my question to these guys is that who will go to the small villages to work if you are all a bsc msc qualified you will not go but then giving a pair of glass in a small village is very simple idea because you can use technology today much better than what is before a paper published two years ago shows that a simple pair of glass given to a tea tea worker tea leaf picker picking person in assam garden has improved productivity by 40 percent and similarly if you give a affordable glass or a free pair of glass for press bay i will improve a lot to the rural people which is not happening and what is the, the fact fact is that there are 1.1 billion people in the world who require a simple press by pick glass when we are aging and the longevity is increased we are taking pride but then we also become blind at the age of 40 45 unless we have a near vision reading glasses so with this thought i will say that i will i will i will uh, i will echo what uh, dr mohan told that supposing this platform expanded beyond covid or during covid to a larger platform and this idea Sheikh Daoud and Salim, who called me, I, I said immediately, I had another finance meeting with the early person. I said, No, I'm not in finance meeting today. Let me go to this wonderful meeting. I want to meet all my friends through this uh, Zoom. And uh, if this can be translated, just as Mohan told, just sit down and talk to each other. That might disseminate ideas. And I'm sure that, like uh, Honorable Prime Minister told uh, two days ago about the our self-sustain in India, which was not a new idea because this has been talking to Gandhi. Gandhi told that do not send cotton to to get your your uh, finished product. Well, the British told that if you build a build a make steel, I will bite it. And but Ratan Tata went and uh, built the steel. But then the story came from Kalam, and I am very fond of this story because I remind myself a lot of times. And this story, all of you know, but let me repeat.
Vivekanand and, uh, and uh, JRD Tata, they were traveling together from Tokyo to Chicago, one for a religious meeting, one to hire or buy or, or inherit technology of uh, making steel so that uh, Tata could make some steel. At that time, I believe Vivekanand told that, well, you can survive today, but tomorrow you have to depend on yourself and to make make something to 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 do capacity building and training this is how the internet of science came similar way unless you train more young people and uh, and uh, not for sake of employment but also empowerment then only our in our health industry healthcare including eye care can improve a lot i stop here thank you well yes sir. thank you thank you uh uh yeah thank you so much sir i think uh very uh informative sessions about uh the kalam dream as well as uh, how we have aligned with kalam sir and brought so many changes in our country uh thank you for your uh, session and also joining for the session uh i think we have the